All right, ladies and gentlemen, as the Pens await to find out who their next opponent will be, Bob Dvorak is uh, stylish today with the sky blue Penguins gear. Where'd you get that at? It was a Christmas gift from the, the grandkids. Yeah. Uh, well, this is a 50-year-old blue color, Columbia blue, uh, when they wore it uh, when they were founded uh, 50 years ago. And wouldn't that be a special treat on the 50th anniversary of their founding to bring home another piece of silver? Greg Diolis, Bob Dvorak, well, this is the show after the show. Jenny Bloodworth, again, happy birthday today. 26 years young, my producer, who's done a great, great job. We've had a very busy day here in time to head home and get a little R&R. &R. But before we do, so tonight, 7 o'clock, NBC Sports Network. I'm sure it'll be Doc Emmerich on the call. Washington, Toronto, Capitals up three games to two. you got Ovechkin and you've got Matthews. Who would you like to see the Penguins play in the conference semifinals. I really don't have a favorite because two di contrasting styles and Penguins will have to adjust to either one. But, you know, uh, Washington, obviously, a big physical team, tough goalie, and uh, Ovi Ovechkin, the sniper. Toronto, young, fast, kind of like a mirror image of the Penguins with Babcock behind the bench. So uh, it'll be a challenge either way, but uh, I don't really don't have a preference as they say. My, my preference, Bob, I'd rather the Penguins actually play the Capitals because I don't think the Capitals believe deep down inside that they can beat the Penguins. And I think the Penguins have that belief that, that they have just sort of something special on them. And I don't think Toronto, those young kids don't know that they can't do it. And that scares me. So who is the hero of the Penguins thus far? Is it a young Jake Ginzel who's had a ton of goals? Is it someone maybe like a Brian Rust who's been very strong? Phil Kessel continuing to pay dividends since coming over from Toronto. Mark andre Fleury getting the opportunity and making the most of it. Or is it Crosby and Malcolm not for putting the puck in the net, but for assisting those young guys and giving them an opportunity to shoot and score? Yes. <laughs> I'd say all of the above. I mean, the story of the playoffs to me in the first round is Mark andre Fleury. In short notice, thrown into the crucible and he comes up big. Malkin with his point totals, um, you know that that's a they're a tough team to play against because they come at you with those four lines. And Personal note: You just said something before we went on the air here with this little show after the show. I have such respect for people who give their time and public service. Dick Thornburg was one I've always enjoyed and admired. You told me, and I forgot he was the governor when Three Mile Island happened. Recently in town, along with many other dignitaries, paying tribute to Henry Hillman. Uh, Tom Corbett was there as well. He got your book, which I'm excited to hear about. But just give me some thoughts as a reporter covering a very upstanding individual, Dick Thornburg, a lawyer, obviously, national politics, and our former governor. Well, he was a Western Pennsylvania uh, prosecutor and uh, big in the Justice Department. Don't forget, he had to beat Pete Flaherty in a real tough general election. Um, and then three months into his uh, first term, uh, the worst nuclear commercial nuclear accident in the history of the United States happened. And uh, it was his calm, cool, rational hand at the helm, I think, that really got uh, Pennsylvania through that crisis. Him and Jenny Thornburg, bucket list, cup of Beautiful coffee. People. Just talking to them. That'd be yeah. neat, really neat. Really nice people. And, you know, they reached out, saw the article in the paper. And I said, uh, you know, Jenny and Dick, this is a campaign of a different sort. You're going to read some stuff about me you never knew about. But uh, uh, they were very um, interested. It's in, nice. Yeah, it is. And, you know, we've, re we've remained uh, in contact uh, through the years. We, even there was a 10-year uh, Three Mile Island anniversary. I was the only reporter um, invited to attend that. So he's having a big 85th birthday party July 3rd at uh, PNC Park. So, uh, you know, good on him. He was a great, great son of, and overcame personal adversity, uh, you know, some personal challenges in his own life. So I always respected and admired people who were able to do that. Rafael Nadal, 10-time, he's won that Rolex tournament. Monte Carlo, congratulations to the Spaniard. Also, Kevin Chappell, your leader, heading into the final round of the Valero Texas Open. And NASCAR, Bristol, Tennessee. Last thing before we go, Pirates, PNC Park, 135. Ivan Nova gets the start. We need more runs. We need more runs. But the pitching, starting pitching, just get it together. You need a little leather, too. That would, that would help the pitching. Yeah, they had a couple of excuses. Right, they're built to play good defense to help a young pitching staff and uh, a young pitching staff that needs to get extra outs, that's a recipe for disaster. Bob, I'm afraid it's, it's paralysis by analysis with this shifting that the Pirates are doing. It's getting everybody yeah. out of the position. That's why Harrison made the error the other day. He was playing on the you grass. Know, 45 feet yeah. behind the grass and you can't field a ground ball cleanly in that stuff. I don't care how well manicured the grass is. 
And by the way, get the Post Gazette today. His former employer, great friend Ed Bouchette, Steeler Insider, of course, 93.7 The Fan. Some of the players he believes will be the ones you'll be hearing about and seeing when the NFL draft unfolds on Thursday. Do you know how many people work at the Post Gazette? About half of them. Ladies and gentlemen. But I kid. I'm a kidder. The proceeding is not necessarily the views. I love the Post-Gazette. In the meantime, for Bob Dvorak, Greg Diolis, Jenny Bloodworth, and all of us here at CBS Radio, have yourself a great rest of your Sunday, and let's go Pirates.